Good evening, everybody. Welcome to another What's Up Wednesday. Hard to believe yet another week has flown by. And I just want to thank you for joining me tonight for another What's Up Wednesday. This is episode 66, I think. 66 consecutive weeks of helping you be a better RVer. Got some friends in the house tonight. We've already got a big stack of people. This is great. Um, thank you for joining the, the live session. Got some really cool content for you tonight. Really exciting show. And um, if you're new to the program, what we do here is we help you be a better RVer, whether you are no time still researching, part-time taking cool trips of days, weeks, months, and the f uh, maybe crazy person like me living in my van now for three years. Uh, my name is Scott. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Go Small, Live Large. It's all about the Class B camper van experience. We got a fun topic tonight. And oftentimes what we do is we pick a viewer audience friend question and we kind of elaborate on that so um this is going to be our topic tonight is a uh, map versus app and i'm kind of excited about that and we've got some good news to share with you right out of the right out of the gate here and uh, let me zoom in here for you and that is uh, go small live large has hit twenty thousand subscribers that's kind of a big deal it's uh, several years in the making, and it's just always nice to see success. And many thanks to many of you for helping drive that. Uh, I'm continuing to do what I can to uh, get into the ears and eyeballs and brains of people looking to do camper vanning. So uh, just thank you for that. If you're joining us for the thumbnail, let me show you what our program looks like tonight. Uh, we're going to have the uh, map versus app uh, contest. I'm going to give you some demos. Uh, we've got camper van tip. Uh, we've got libation live. And it's sitting right here, boys and girls. Mm, stout. Yes, indeed. And we've got a movie recommendation for you. This is Libation Live. I actually kind of ran into him by accident, but sort of on purpose. It was kind of a funny story. Uh, eager to tell you about that. And, of course, it's all about your questions. Um, we have no guests tonight. It's just little old me and you and your questions. So if you are um, having any of these topics on your mind, let me zoom in here for you. Uh, there we go. Uh, we'd be eager to uh, answer these. I'm now two weeks and a few days uh, back on the road full time after a few months at a home base living in the van there while we're remodeling this house. But if any of these topics are on your mind, uh, all of this is uh, front and center for me because I am living it uh, again, which is pretty awesome. I'm pretty excited about that. Okay, let's... Um, Let's go, uh, where am I coming? Let's say hello to some folks first. Uh, I see some folks rolling in here. This is just great. I just love this community that we're building together. It's so great. Here's Ron. He's always first one in. It's kind of cute to see how it's a little bit of a, <laughs> who's there first? Um, and Denim's in the house. Appreciate that. Um, I, yeah, we're going to talk about routes a little bit. I'm he unfortunately not headed to Charleston, but I'm glad to know there's one there. Uh, Mason Mike, good to see you, sir. Appreciate that. Says, itching to get on the road again. I assume that's you, sir. Because I'm on the road. Well, let me tell you. I'm going to show you this in just a few minutes uh, where I'm headed. Now, what's up on Wednesday? Um, Shirley's in her uh, rig, and I'm so glad you did not sell your van. Congratulations. Uh, Richard, I think we are neighbors. If you were in Richmond Hill, Georgia, I am literally uh, in the same town. Uh, pretty funny. Sherry's in the house tonight. Thank you for being here. Cold, Wisconsin. Ah, sounds so lovely to me. Uh, Louisville, going to be passing through your area. We'll talk about that. Uh, Missouri, good to see you, sir. From where in Missouri? Rich, good to see you. And Illinois, always. Jane, Roger, howdy. <laughs> and uh, Van Liberty, good to see you. Grass is getting green in Michigan. Yeah, spring has sprung, and that is just great. I uh, just love that, love that. All right, let me tell you where I'm coming in from, and that would be uh, Savannah, Georgia. Yes, indeed. I am in Savannah, Georgia, probably through, whoops, let me get this off, uh, probably through, um, it's either Saturday or Sunday, I'm not sure yet, um, but I'm bunkered down, get a lot of work done, uh, because when you see where I'm headed and how quick I'm doing it, you're going to know why. But Savannah, it's lovely. Um, it's in the um, low 80s uh, in the daytime and the high 60s at night. It's really lovely weather. Um, although no CMs have started coming out, not big about that. And always, I'm very curious where you're watching from. That's why we always like to start off with that. And if you are, um, coming in from a different country, uh, than the United States, uh, be sure to drop that in the chat and we'll like to put a flag in your country and show up next week. A uh, global program. We've had dozens of countries, um, joining this program, um, either live or watching the replay. So it's just a delight to know where you are watching from. Um, the video we're going to be dropping on Sunday evening, and here's kind of my go forward. 
uh, uh, Sundays are going to be my main video drop. Posting to YouTube. Um, it's going to be 6.40 p.m. Eastern. And I guess that'd be, what, 5.40 p.m. Central. And what we're doing is I'm getting these stacked up to give me a little bit uh, more breathing space to bring us some places video. But this is our first attempt uh, on Sunday at doing a Scott score video. The rig is a Tranquility 19P4 plan by Thor. And um, join me for the premiere again, 6.40 p.m. Eastern this Sunday. I'm really, really excited about that uh, video. And excited for, um, we've got two more in the can, um, a Coachman Nova and a... Uh, Cahaba by Tiffin. <laughs> um, we got a bunch more uh, on the docket. So as always, we've got our survey says tonight. These are some fun questions coming your way. And heck, if you're having a good day, just give us a thumb up right out of the gate. We always appreciate that. That helps uh, YouTube share this out more readily. And um, that's the way we like to roll. A couple of tidbits, and we'll get into our topic of the night. So guests, again, we have coming up on the 20th, just a couple weeks. Um, uh, my partner, Kyle, he runs our Airbnb business. We're going to be talking about Airbnb being a property, why you can be RVing. Um, so he's getting a little nervous already. I, I got to tell you, it's kind of funny. Um, Wingham, we're expecting to see them uh, soon. Uh, we have another meeting in two weeks. Um, they're getting all their ducks in the line. And what they want to do is uh, they're going to announce exclusive stuff here on this channel. Go small, live large on this program. What's up Wednesday? So they've assured me they are not doing anything other than just that, which is awesome. Uh, a couple weeks out again, we have got Embassy RV. Terry Minix um, is coming on to do a Q&A with the Van Pro. That would be the guy himself. And um, if you're into embassy RVing or if you're looking for vans that are very different than what you see in the marketplace, you don't want to miss this. Um, it's going to be 2.30 p.m. 2.30 p.m. Central Time um, on the 22nd. Watch for that. And if you are into camper van uh, tours, places to take your camper van and products, this is the channel you want to subscribe to and uh, hit the notification bell so you don't miss a single one. So with that, let me show you this. This is going to blow your mind. So I've been talking about wanting to go um, up the East Coast. Uh, normally, I kind of go up through the Midwest and then scoot over to the Pacific Northwest and or down to Texas and up California. I've been all over the country except the East Coast and in the Northeast. And that was my original plan. As plans change in the camper van world, we now have a new trajectory. And what this looks like is this. And I now have this on my um, my door right above me on the sliding patio door. And we're doing in three weeks, a thousand miles, about 10 stops. So those are the big cities to help me target trajectory. I'm hoping to stay in small towns along the way. Harvest Host, Boondocker Welcome. Um, what the situation is, is I have a uh, piece of property up there that is um, having a situation and I'm needing to be on site to get it dealt with. So this is the reason why. Um, and I kind of float around the upper Midwest. I'm going to do Wisconsin, and I'm going to do uh, Michigan, and hopefully get over to um, uh, uh, Toronto and um, and uh, Ohio a bit more. So we're going to be up in that part until um, August, and then I'm zipping. Uh, I'm not sure where yet. <laughs> Maybe back up into Canada, and then down um, so we can see the fall colors, and then go down the East Coast back toward Florida uh, toward the end of the year. So that's my deal. Um, I am uh, making a doubled effort to get some um, places um, posted. Um, I've actually, yeah, so just we'll leave it at that. Um, okay, so let's talk about this. Let's actually see if we can take a few questions um, right nine minutes after. And uh, the question format we like to use, if you're new to the uh, program, is uh, this. So if you can put uh, three stars, three question marks, it helps me find your um, your. Uh, your question more readily. So that would be uh, very, very helpful. Um, get my light adjusted here. So let me scan for questions quick, and then we will um, get onto our topic of the night. I'm really excited to get into this with you because it was a good question. Uh, thank you, Jane. Congrats on the 20,000 subscribers. Yeah, about four years in the making. Pretty amazing. I'm so excited. It's just so great. Um, and the channel's kind of growing right now again, which is really, really awesome. Um, a lot of folks in the house, and I appreciate it. There's Nancy, and uh, oh, that's funny. He's across the road from the KOA. That's where I'm bunkered down at. That's funny. Um, we're neighbors. Um, Greensboro, North Carolina. I'm going to be passing through that area, sort of. Um, uh, oh, this is a good one. Um, 
Yeah, Mason Mike says, uh, hey, Scott, when you get into Canada, can try to get an interview or video with uh, Van City Van Life. Yeah, Chrome and Cruise, wouldn't that be something? Holy cow. That guy is a busy guy. I think I'm busy. I don't know how he does it. Just him and his dog roaming around building vans out of ambulances or something like that. It's pretty amazing. All right, so get your questions teed up. And uh, uh, one more, this is a quick one. So Travel Dreamer wants to know, how is Tuxedo, do, uh, t- tuxedo doing? Tuxedo is my van cat. Um, I would not be surprised if you see him roaming around the show because it's that werewolf hour. And he's already let me know that it's time to go for a W-A-L-K. Um, and um, I had to chill him out until the program's over tonight. So let's get into our topic. I'm just really excited about this topic. And that is um, map versus app. It's kind of a funny thing to think about. Um, if you put, well, let me, let me continue on here for a second. Oh, okay. So the audience friend, this is John. Um, he wants to know, what's the name of your spiral uh, book uh, with the states on the map? He was looking at a pretty old video, the one year um, anniversary of my van video that I made in Austin, Texas. And the short answer to your question, John, is this. And it's called the Rand McNally Road Atlas. Nothing too sexy about that, but I've carried one in my van since I left in the very first week, um, even part-time. So why a paper atlas? And this would be a kind of a fun test. Those of you with young children, I'd say 15, maybe 20, certainly 15 and younger, grandkids maybe, have them pull out a road atlas if you have one and have them navigate to point to point, point A to point B. It would be a hysterical uh, exercise uh, to see them try and read a map. <laughs> Old people like me were like, yeah, we remember those days. And we remember MapQuest where you printed that bad boy out. Oh, my God. So funny. So, But I actually carry one with me. And you might wonder why. Let me kind of go through this for, with you quick. Why a paper map? What I like to do is I like to see it all at a glance. It gives me a sense of perspective. I have a paper backup in case of a digital failure. Let's be honest, old school is kind of fun, right? (laughs) Um, Paper maps outdate very quickly, though. And you really need a co-pilot to navigate a paper map. Or you got to be super on point and very distracted while you're driving because it is not easy to read. Uh, I'll demonstrate that in a moment. So um, why paper map? That's what I do. I've had one you know, since, since we got rolling. So why digital maps? Let me zoom in here for you. Super convenient. You're like, uh, no kidding. Uh, turn by turn directions, very convenient. Route options, I'm going to show you that. Um, you can share your route and or your location and or your destination with others. That can be super helpful if you're traveling with folks. The info is updated regularly. So nothing is ever uh, outdated, which is great. Even road construction, even traffic hazards, it reroutes you around it. Um, I found it best to be seen on an iPad or a tablet of similar. Uh, why? Because a screen, I have a giant iPad. I have the 12.9 inch iPad. It's the sheet size of a sheet of paper. So maps turn out to be really, really good on that, uh, platform. So let me show you a couple, uh, examples here and I'll give you some quick demos. So here's our paper map. It looks pretty busy, and it is pretty busy. That's why I think it'd be funny to have a 15-year-old navigate from point to point, um, <laughs> or a map, right? Um, but hey, yeah, the whole world used them for a long, long time, so they still are useful. Uh, this is the Apple Maps on my iPad, and what I am pointing out here, we'll do this real time in a second, is several options based on checking the avoid highways on the bottom on the left-hand side. And that's how I'm getting uh, a couple different options here. And it's giving that in real time miles and time, which is super nice. Um, Harvest Host, we've talked extensively um, about Harvest Host. Uh, they too have a route, tri- uh, route planning tool. They take the highway, but hey, it's there, right? I'll demonstrate that in a second. KOA, um, I use KOAs quite frequently. Uh, they don't, do not have navigation, but they have um, places on a map you can go to. So it helps me navigate to the places uh, when it's time to do tank duty and to chill and do laundry. And the last one, we haven't never talked about this one, I don't think. Um, this is My Passport America. It's an RV park discount program. You get 50% off, usually the first one or two nights. And it's usually off season. And But it's taken me some really interesting places. They too have a um, navigation point, which is super helpful. 
And the last one, we've talked about this in the past. This is all stays. Uh, there's no navigation, but once you get to your destination and you want to see what RV services, places, campgrounds there are, uh, this is what this tool is really uh, good for. So with that, let's do some demos quick. I think this, I think you'll find this uh, interesting. Um, how are we doing on here? Pretty good. Okay, doing on time. Good. Okay, let me shift gears. Um, we're going to take this off. We'll stop that screen. We're going to start uh, this screen. So I've got this connected to my iPad right here so we can see this in real time. All right. So this is my iPad. I'll keep me on screen for just a second. Now I'm going to go to... Um, a couple of, uh, we're going to go to um, Apple Maps first. So um, let me zoom in here for so you guys can see this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to type in um, Savannah, Georgia. Um, get that spun up. And you know you can do this. I'm sure Google Maps does something similar. So I'm going to go from Savannah to um, Greenville, uh, uh, South Carolina right there. Okay, then I'm going to hit Route. And this is how it comes up with those um, couple different, three different options. Um, and what's kind of interesting here, because of there is no freeway, these are probably state and county roads, or state, state roads and U.S. highways. There is not much difference between these. Um, if I go up through Columbia on the interstate, um, I, can, I can save basically an hour. I'm going to go straight up the bold line there for, uh, um, through Augusta. Never been to Augusta, so I'm really excited about that. Uh, let me zoom in here for you. There you go. So that's how I do that. Um, and that's why I love digital because it's real time. You get a lot of options. This would take a considerable amount of um, math uh, the old way. Okay, let me look at Harvest Hosts. Now, if I type in um, from Savannah, Georgia to Greenville, South Carolina, we'll touch that. It says give me the route. Again, what I don't like about this, it only gives me one way. Uh, that's taking the freeway that we saw from um, Apple Maps. We kind of know what that's what the deal is there, right? Um, but by go doing this, watch this. So I'm going to change this because my first leg really is not to Greenville. My first leg is to Augusta, Georgia. And now I hit route. And now I get the Harvest Host sites along that route. So that is kind of cool. So um, how I like to do maps and some route planning is I kind of break it off into segments legs, if you will, like kind of traveling by airplane. And um, this has been a really great tool for me to see what are my free and near free options using the Harvest Host Boondocker Welcome Program. And then um, what I do next is, wait for it, is overlay the uh, KOAs. And I like KOAs because it just comes up. They're really consistent. I got a lot of points. So here again, if I, you know, you can kind of zoom in here. And I, I know I'm going for my... Um, Savannah down here, kind of in the bottom right here, you see that, um, to uh, Greenville up here. So I've got, again, kind of coming up through this way, um, I've got a couple options when I get up here, and that kind of makes me good feel good, because when I leave there, I'm headed up um, uh, to Lexington, oh, well, I'll look at my list again, uh, Greenville, Asheville, Asheville and Bristol, Tennessee are next. So um, I've actually stayed at one of these before. So this is a very helpful tool. So just for um, kicks and giggles, let's uh, look at this other tool that may be new to you. Now, this is um, My Passport America. It's a program I signed up in January 2019 at the um, Tampa RV Super Show. I was all excited. I think I bought a it was either a five-year membership for $300 or a three-year membership for $300. I can't remember. Um, I've used it a few times. It actually has come in handy. Uh, let me show you what this looks like. They, too, have a route planning tool. So I'm going to go from uh, Savannah, Georgia, to, uh, what did I say, Greenville, South Carolina. And I'm going to scroll up. Their UI user interface is a little clunky, but okay. So here we go, and we should see one dot. Let me zoom in here. Um, it's going to make me a liar. It was Betty's RV Park. Oh, no, where'd she go? Maybe I have to go back one. Uh, let me go back. Let's try to Augusta. Uh, <laughs> Betty's RV Park. It was really inexpensive, um, but I'm always leery when. I hope we can pull this up. Yep, there she is. And now we pop up. So this was Ponderosa. There she is, Betty's RV Park. So it takes you to um, some information. And what I'm always a little curious about is the park website. You see that there? 
And when the campground doesn't have a website, I'm probably not interested. I might make a phone call. Look at that price. 10 to $15 a night. I'll take that any day of the week. Typically, you only stay for one or two nights, and that's the deal there. And generally, it's um, in the um, off-season. Let's just see what Ponderosa here in Rocky Ford, George, is doing. Uh, so that's kind of what their stuff looks like here. It's 15 bucks a night. So it's a great way to, you know, save some dollars. Let's see if they have a website. They do not. That always makes me a little curious. And then they have uh, important campground notes um, that aren't there either. So either um, these are really small private parks or um, in which case I, I might give them a call just if it's in, in my trajectory and I want to save a few dollars. Uh, so that's the way I do that. Um, now, if we want to compare, let's see how we did. Um, and yeah, we've got one more to do, um, and that's all stays. And we have seen this before. Get to my, so all stays right here. Let me zoom in here for you. So I'm just going to type in um, Augusta, Georgia. Let's see what happens. So again, there's no route planning, but I know what to expect when I get there. Now, is there Walmart? Um, this Walmart here is uh, kind of given a green light. That would be a red W. It would indicate cannot here's uh, cannot stay. Here's a red W over here, neighborhood market. But with the um, yellow W, you guys can see that maybe. Um, this, this, the interface here is not great either because the icons don't expand as you zoom in. Um, so I know what to expect when I get to Augusta, Georgia. Some RV services, place I might stay, propane, etc. Uh, so kind of cool there. Um, so what do, you th what do you think? Kind of interesting, right? All right, let me um, take that off screen because this is map versus the apps. So I'll try hard not to spill everything. So what I do like about paper maps is this. Whoa. Is you get a perspective on everything. So this is clearly the United States. But if I want to see what Georgia is like, and I actually did not even realize this until I got this map out. This is one reason I like it. So they, they take the states, and this is the large print edition. Oh, that's coming out. Um, so that's kind of the top half of Georgia. If I go to this page, um, here's uh, here's Savannah. Uh, Savannah's way up here, so they kind of split the state. But what allows me to do is get perspective. That is one thing I don't think that the, the digital apps do well is give perspective. And sometimes that really helps me get a sense of where are we going. I didn't realize Augusta bordered um, the state next to it, which whatever that is, South Carolina. Um, so that's why I kind of keep this around. If, if I really don't know where I'm going and I want a quick bird's eye view of this, um, the paper map really helps give quick perspective. And then I can do the digital tools to get a sense of what's next. And I um, hope you found that helpful. Uh, if you did, give it a thumb up. Maybe that brings up some questions um, that you might want to um, uh, ask. But I will definitely say without a doubt that um, map versus app, app wins 100% of the time. And I'm pretty sure Benjamin Franklin, given uh, the same options, would be using uh, digital app tools too. Um, <laughs> so, okay. Again, if you kind of enjoyed that, give that a bad boy a thumb up. I would appreciate that. And that is, oops, let's get that off the screen. Um, one second, please. I've got four screens in front of me. This is pretty pretty complicated, uh, but it's really helpful. Sharing the story. Okay, we're going to look for some... Um, That's not what we want. Hold on. No, 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 no. Uh, stop screen. Hang on. Share screen. Share screen. There we go. Okay. Yeah. If you like that, give that a thumb up. <laughs> Gee, many Christmas. All right. Okay. Let's look for some uh, some questions, and because I know you got to have a few out there after all that. Um, uh, so let's see, good stuff coming in here. I'm looking for the question format and, uh, let's see, there's some good ones coming in here. Um, let's see, Texas, we got that one. So, so Steve Ackman's got a question here and let's see, I've got a tip in, um, 
now, but we're going to take a few questions first. So, um, Scott, I'm very torn between a 19 foot transit or sprinter or 20, 21, 21 foot, 22 foot pro master van. What do you think about the length difference in terms of parking and internal space? Uh, lovely question. And let me take a, take a drink of water here. It's kind of sacrilege drinking water out of a Lukenbach, Texas class, I think, but, <laughs> um, it really boils down to how do you want an RV, sir? Um, why do you want an RV? I think the space is dramatic on the inside for those extra two feet. You're not going to notice it driving around. You really won't notice it parking, but it will make a heck, heck of a big difference on the inside. Let me tell you, I spent some time in um, two adventure vans are in the 144-inch uh, Sprinter, which are 19 feet. And I, I can't tell you what a sacrifice it is to have less of everything by shortening the vehicle by two feet. Um, what's great about the ProMaster, it's the widest of the chassis. Sprinter and Transit are narrow. The tallest is the ProMaster, or the uh, Transit. The next tallest is the Sprinter. The ProMaster is the shortest. They still got about 6'2-ish or more in, in, on the inside, but it's like 6'7 interior height on the, on the, uh, on the Transit. It's like 6'2". In the um, in the ProMaster, um, but the width makes all the difference in the world. It's four inches wider on the ProMaster, and if you're getting the two feet longer one, you will have so much more storage, a bigger bathroom, a bigger bed, and I think it just really depends uh, in terms of why do you want an RV, um, and then how do RV systems enable your why? And um, I think that that's the way I would roll. Um, all things being equal, I would buy a ProMaster again in a minute. The width is dramatic. The walls are straight. Um, they're not curved in like the other vans. I don't need the height. Um, so that would be how I'd answer that. But I'm excited for your journey there, sir. Keep us posted. That is awesome. Yeah, I love Chrome Cruise. He's so, he's, if I've had a bad day, I just watch a few of his videos. I'm like, what is my problem? Um, so Rich has got a question here. Do you carry a folding table for outside? What kind? I do not. I used to. I used to have this elaborate setup. It folded out. It was this cool thing. It was pretty big. It's stored in the garage. Um, I never use it because it, most places I roll, they have at least a picnic table. Um, so it was kind of useless space. And again, I'm not the kind of RVer that rolls out into the boondocks with the moose and the mice. I'm uh, I'm going uh, urban camping, uh, so to speak. And uh, so I normally have a table. So folding chair. I do carry a folding chair, a Pico now. Love that. And um, I set that at the table, the picnic table I'm at, because it's way more comfy than the hard uh, hard um, picnic table seats, right? Great questions tonight. Hey, Richard's uh, uh, got a question here. Newbie owner was told always to dump tanks before hitting the road. I was told to never dump until full. So what if tanks are only one third full and I'm hitting the road? That's kind of a beautiful question. I just emptied my tanks today after five days. Um, even here, um, I rolled into KOA with a pretty empty tank, um, even though I'd been two days on the road prior to riding here. Um, now I will, to your point here is, yeah, you don't want to dump your tank until it's pretty full, your waste tank, your toilet waste tank in particular. Um, why? Because the when you evacuate through the, the sewer hose, you want that siphon suction gravity to really do its work, and it doesn't work well if your tank is not full. Um, it kind of you know pushes down and, and empties and evacuates the tank very, very quickly. Um, so what I'm going to do is when I uh, leave here on Friday, even though I have an empty tank now, um, because I don't know where I'm going to stay next for tank duty, I'm going to fill my tank. There'll be some stuff in there. Fill it up pretty pretty, pretty thorough, two-thirds, and then empty it before I leave on Friday. Fill the water, and that's how I like to roll. Um, but I would not leave a place where you have RV tank services available unless you know where you're going next and there are services available. Um, I would not roll out of any place with a half, two thirds full tank because then all of a sudden you're searching for it and it's just not fun. And even rolling into um, a, an RV park, it's just nice to arrive um, or campground, something like that with a empty tank. So it's not the first thing you're doing. Um, so I always do it before I leave and that's how I roll. Great question. Mason Mike wants to know, um, I have the giant paper version of the Road Atlas, right? My, yeah, that is right where mine is, right? My driver door. Um, so I just, again, get a perspective, right? You can pinch and zoom, pinch and zoom. It's like, uh, it gets, uh, there's something about that, that tactical paper. Um, I totally agree with you. I would not have a van without one of those in there. 
<laughs> Richard Kurtz say a gas station used to give maps away for free. That's another kind of a front exercise. Give a folded paper map to a teenager and say, unfold it, and then fold that back bad boy up. If you've never seen the Ellen DeGeneres shows where she gave like a 20-year-old a phone book and said, um, find a muffler shop, and she handed him a rotary phone and uh, said, make a phone call and uh, get some information about mufflers. It's kind of the same way with maps, I think. We're just so accustomed to our digital age, you almost forget. Um, so you've got an interesting question here. Um, wants to know, would anything convince you to get a van without Volta? No one van has everything, and I'm finding myself drawn to some vans that don't have Volta, but do have lithium batteries. Uh, superb question. Um, I think floor plan trumps the lithium. I would get a good quality lithium system. Um, so it'd be floor plan first. And if you didn't have a Volta style or a Lithionic style or a Master Volt style, you know, something that has big batteries, you know, thousands of hours of, um, like mine has almost 9,000 hours of, of storage capacity, a huge second generator to charge that battery when you're driving for an hour or so, um, run my air conditioner for um, hours and hours wherever I am. Um, if it doesn't have that capacity, that to me is not a, a satisfying uh, lithium system. But um, you know, I think it's floor plan first and then uh, battery second. That's the way I would um, encourage you to look at that. Because um, you're going to live in the floor plan and you can kind of figure out the power over time. But I would highly recommend you know, get a high quality lith lithium system. Great question. Okay. Yeah, Jane's kind of uh, validating what I'm talking here, Steve. Um, they had a road trek. Um, and the two feet, you just don't miss it. I, 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 I just, you know, 21 feet's the same length as a four-door Ford F-150. I mean, they're long, but they're just, they're not, it's not a bus. It's not a Class C RV. It's a van. So, um, okay, let's uh, shift gears. Let's do our tip. Make sure I have this teed up. Um, oh, let's do, I might have a few new folks in here. So let's do uh, this quick. And uh, some great questions tonight. Again, um, some things that might be top of mind for you are some items like this. And because um, yeah, I'm just living, living it all again. Um, now three years, over three years. And I'm super excited to be on the road. I can't tell you. And I'm really getting itching to move. Um, I've been here for a few days getting a lot of stuff done. But I'm so itching to move. Okay. So stickers. We've got stickers. Um, uh, we are working on some additional ideas here. But right now, these are our sticker options for you. And um, you can go to my website get all the details. We're doing them super old school. I'm sending cash in the mail. I know. Um, we'll figure out a better way someday. <laughs> but right now, um, uh, my mother-in-law is um, still helping us with that. And uh, she needs some business, boys and girls. So if you kind of want a sticker on your, I don't know, someplace cool, uh, what do you think about magnets? I've seen magnets. Um, I was thinking about patches too. But um, I don't know. I don't want a bunch of logo merch. I really have something different. So we're working on some ideas. Um, let's talk about survey says. I love these. Uh, there are some juicy questions this week. Let me zoom in here for you. Um, so for those of you under 30 years old, this is Richard Dawson. He was the original Family Feud guy. He kissed everything that stood still on TV. And um, here's the two questions from this past week. Uh, to become a better RVer, would you rather... Take a class online, watch YouTube videos, take an in-person hands-on workshop, learn from my own trial and error, travel with another RVer to learn the ways. No surprise from this crowd, watching a bunch of YouTube and then kind of applying it either in a hands-on workshop or trial and error. Uh, so I thought that was kind of funny. Wait till you see this one. While your spouse is driving your RV, would you rather sleep, read a book, consume digital content, have a convo with the spouse, uh, sit in silence. That's a nice mix. I appreciate that. What do you think? <laughs> um, I know a lot of folks uh, um, kind of did. We, we listen to a lot of music and we, we travel together and um, listen to audiobooks. Uh, I like those a lot. So um, it's kind of funny though, right? Somebody asked me, what's a convo? Uh, I'm like, that'd be conversation in 2022 vernacular? I don't know. Um, okay. And these, again, are, are all on my website. Uh, I'm going to start taking down some of the older ones, but you can go see those results. Uh, join the journey. Again, we're in motion now, so Instagram is a hot thing. And uh, let's zoom over to 
Um, so I've been posting stuff about the cat. So if you want to follow the cat in particular, um, you want to follow me on Instagram. Um, okay. So here's our van tip for uh, the night. We have another demo for you. I like demos. Do you guys like demos? Um, so here's the deal. Uh, hopefully nobody is eating dinner. Uh, black tank glove storage. This to me is like finding the perfect backpack, find the perfect duffel bag, gym bag, find the perfect leather coat. Um, you got to go through. I had to go through a lot to find what really works for me. Um, and here's why it's important, I think, because you kind of got dirty hands and you put them in a bag and you don't want to touch, touch the dirty bits on the end, right? So you need a big enough bag to get them in without touching everything to get them in the, in the darn bag and they get it closed up. That's what I always um, struggled with. So here's what I came up with. You ready for this? Um, they are next to the sewer connection. Use those this afternoon. And I got a tip for you here in just a second. Please notice this, the direction of the fingertips, because this is the bag right here. This is how confident I am in my process, because I'm going to look through it. <laughs> so what I do is I put the gloves in the bag the same way every time. If I'm putting the, the gloves in the bag, I'm putting the tips at the, the, reading, the reading direction. So they always go in the bag in the same way. And you're probably, and it's what's big, what's cool about this bag is it's big enough that you can open it, you get them in there, and then you zip it, or this thing actually seals water tight. You're probably asking, what kind of a bag is that? That's kind of cool, Scott. I'm glad you asked. Here's what it is. Again, I looked and tried everything. This is actually a bait bag. I got it at Pro Bass, uh, Bass Pro Shops, Cabela's. It's 16 by 13. They compared it to the Ziploc freezer bag, you know, Ziploc bags. This vinyl is 37 times thicker than that. And it's 11 bucks. And what I do is I, I put my gloves in there, always this way, so the dirty bits are on this part. I fold it once this way, then I fold it in half, and that's what goes into my um, utility closet, um, kind of tucked in there. And if you don't have a really good system for that, that is a genius solution that has been working for me for at least the last year and a half and i couldn't be happier i, I buy two of them and i use one i tuck one in, in in there so when the other one gets you know really soiled i throw it out and use a new one and then next time i'm at a brass pro shop i run in and buy a couple bags uh, i have the same setup for my water my filter um on all the attachments goes in the same kind of bag goes into and I, I roll it up and it goes into the utility closet as well but the black tank is super important to me because i don't want to touch the tips that have been touching everything right and uh, that's kind of the deal with that so that's my van tip for today hopefully um, you have a situation similar and i would love to know about it if that is true let's look at some more questions here and uh, then we're doing our libation live i'm so excited for this um just a couple more minutes so um, so Sherry has a question. I have an atlas to see the big picture on multiple day trips to estimate destinations. Yep. Then Google Maps get there. Yep. I'm not sure. Uh, I trust Google Maps. I check with my paper map for confidence. That's not a bad idea. I, I kind of do Apple Maps is like 98% accurate. If it really gets goofed up, I, I switch over to Google Maps. I do not like Google Maps interface. Um, they do have a music player in the bottom, which is super interesting. Um, but yeah, so like this this route I've been working on, um, getting from Savannah to Chicago land in the next um, three weeks, a thousand miles. Um, and how many stops did I have? Uh, three weeks, thousand miles, ten stops basically. Um, it's good as again have a trajectory of where you're going. Uh, Steve's got a good point here. Uh, some of the newer inform information units, uh, Vans and Cars, the Apple CarPlay and Android uh, um, AutoPlay, whatever, uh, let you use uh, apps from your phone. Uh, I use uh, something. I something I use iPad Pro, each RAM mount for apps. Um, yeah, actually, it's kind of interesting that you say that. So um, this is something I've been doing lately. Let's see, do I need my iPad for anything else? I don't think so. Is um, so I had it on my keyboard there. Let me take this off. You guys are getting a lot of demos tonight. You like this? Um, because what I did when I was running Route 66, and there's still videos coming about Route 66. we got a quick story about that in a second. Is So, again, there's the keyboard 
you know, the, the really expensive, awesome keyboard. My iPad is a tool I use for everything. I sleep with my iPad. The only thing I use my phone for is making a phone call and playing music. And if I kind of know where I'm going, I don't even use it. Uh, not, uh, uh, I use it for navigation. But like on this, this, this trip I'm on here shortly, um, I actually mount it on my folding cover like this, right? And then because it has this little lip, it might be hard to see there. Um, what this does is it fits perfectly in the dash and I kind of wedge it in um, on the dashboard and the glass. And this then becomes the navigation. And I cannot tell you what a difference it makes to see so much more real estate um, displayed. And then I'm also getting kind of good at looking at uh, viewer comments and using AirPods to um, speak back to um, dictate answers. So this has just become just the most useful tool wedged in um, kind of between the glass and the dashboard using this little sticky thing here. And uh, then I use a, a Goal Zero battery to keep it running so it doesn't go dead. Um, they, kind of, they have a huge battery life anyway. But thank you, Steve, for that. That's a great point. Um, RAM mounts might be appropriate for some as well. Uh, Donison uh, Scottsdale, that's great. Nice crowd tonight. This is great. Um, okay, Libation Live, we're just a couple minutes away from there. Um, <laughs> cracker docking. Uh, cracker barrels, yeah. Um, I, I really am, that's a go to if I need to stay the night uh, for the moment. Um, uh, Steve's got an interesting point here. So I've been trying to get excited about road trippers, and I'm not. Um, I found a new one called RV Life. Have, has anybody heard of that before, RV Life? Um, I'm actually doing some some testing on it, and we're going to be talking to them um, about some different ideas. And uh, um, so I'm liking RV Life. It's a red icon versus Road Trippers. The Road Trippers, it's good, but the interface, I just can't get my head around it. Um, so Paige, you got a question here. And uh, do you ever travel the back roads instead of major highways? If so, any particular maps you like? Lovely question. Perfect timing. I really prefer the back roads. The distance and time is actually not that far off uh, in many cases. Um, I prefer the back roads um, all the time. Uh, one, you can slow down, better gas mileage. Two, way better scenery. Three, way more interesting stuff, small towns you can stop that you would never probably even discover. And some of these um, Harvest Hose sites, they are along the, the um, you know, the, the byways um, versus uh, the interstate system. So, yeah, when I roll, unless there's a dramatic difference in time, and unless I'm really pressed to get someplace, I, I take the back road. Um, it just, it's so much more so soothing to me. Uh, I'm sure some of you have done that and you've found that to be true. All right, great questions tonight. Okay, let's do this. Um, Tuxedo has just used his box, so it's very frequent in here, so I need to <laughs> put something else in my nasal cavity. Okay, so here's the deal. Let's do Libation Live. And here's a story here on this. Um, that was actually the bottle I photographed at the um, brew pub, which is about 10 minutes away from this KOA. Um, it's kind of got a funky name. Um, Debelidation De um, Brewing Company. And this is what uh, we're going to drink tonight. This is the Noglifar Stout, Black Stout Nitro. It's 5.5% ABV uh, alcohol by volume and 34 IBU um, international bitter units. Um, it got a lot of coffee in this, he said. And if you kind of read down through that, the coffee was donated by the Tosa Coffee Company, a veteran-owned and operated coffee shop here in Richmond Hills. And let me just give you a couple more pictures, then we'll um, take me out. There he was. This is the man himself, the owner. So husband and wife team, veterans. Um, they got a really clever story. If you go to their website, um, this is how you uh, – that's not how you say it. Well, kind of Google it. <laughs> I don't think they have their website on here. I apologize. Um, a really interesting story about this Viking thing. Um, this is the brew pub itself. And uh, really kind of a fun operation. I just love supporting these small businesses. Are you ready for this? They're actually a harvest host site. I did not know that. I would looked at it, but they were uh, did not have space available. See the RVs in the back? There's Lily off to the left, my van. Um, they can fit seven. The first opening they had was uh, Sunday night. So if I'm still in the area, I may well head into uh, this joint and just go have a little fun in the backyard. Um, this is stout beer. Let me take that offline. 
Um, there's, there's three kind of beers I typically like. A lager, Pilsner, which are pretty mild beers. Think of you know, Coors, Budweiser. Um, but then I like stouts and, lo- and um, porters. There's some about that I just love. So let's pour this in our appropriate glass. How's that coming out? Oh, my God. It's so good. So I tasted it. It's got tons of coffee. Mm, cheers, boys and girls. Hope you're having a libation live with me. You know, they never hit my palate the way they look. Um, some are pretty chewy, the porters in particular. But the stouts, it is just lovely. He said, be sure and drink this tonight because um, it's a nitro. So the carbonation goes out. It's just beautiful. So good. And are you ready for this? I'm going to repurpose this growler. I'm going to put another uh, bottle of iced coffee in my refrigerator. Probably leave their label on. Um, but I just love. This was um, 30, um, 32 ounce. And this ran um, $13, which is a pretty good deal. I get several glasses out of this. So super happy about that. Um, and did I mention their Harvest Host, Harvest Host site? Is that just the coolest thing? And we, I rolled in there, um, had a glass of beer this afternoon, kind of checking things out and wanted to go find something local that was close. And um, all the RVers and us were talking and uh, this uh, old boy had a new, new Corvette and he went out and started it for us. And again, it's just this community of travelers, craft taste, and looking for different experiences. I just love Harvest Hosts. So I may actually stay the weekend so I can stay there um, on Sunday night. Maybe I'll slip up there and see if I can see. Oh, take see. Welcome. Say hi. Come here. Up. Come on. Up. Come here. This is where you earn your keep. There he is. He's like, what's all this stuff going on? It's time to go outside. Outside? Tuxedo. Outside? <laughs> yeah, he's pretty excited to go outside. Let's go for a walk. Um, so that's my uh, libation live. Let's see what we got next. Let's do a few more questions. And then I got a good movie for you. Um so let's take a few more questions. These are great questions coming in tonight. Um, yeah, always take the back roads for sure. If you can. Uh, uh, so Joan's saying, uh, Joanne, sorry, saying congrats on 20,000 subscribers. Yeah, big milestone. The next biggie, I don't know. What's 25 is pretty cool, right? Probably 50. I mean, every other 10,000 is a pretty big deal, but uh, I'm hoping there's a pretty big pretty big growth over the next uh, 12 months. We'll see. Uh, Mason Mike said, gets interesting when using the paper maps, your destination is on the the crease of the page. Yeah, for sure. Um, Totally agree with that. And uh, uh, Travel Dreamer, I got a question here. Do you ever use Garmin? Some people prefer satellites versus GPS. What is your thought? I've never used Garmin. Um, TomTom Tom was built into some of uh, our previous vehicles, but I've never used a Garmin, Garmin device. And I don't have, um, like RV Life, the app I was talking about, I have a GPS edition that will give um, clearance heights and plots. So if you say, hey, I need at least 15 feet of clearance, like for a Class A or something like that, there's probably more than that, um, they will route you places that you wouldn't get stuck under the bridge. Um, but I just use... I use the, the phone, the iPad, um, so GPS. Um, I prefer the roadmap looking versus satellite. Um, I think what you're talking about is this. Let's see if we can do that quick. I don't even know how to change this. All right here, maybe. Yeah, so you can see here you can change the way it looks. Um, so I use driving. This is satellite. Uh, that's not super helpful to me. I don't know. Um, That'd be kind of cool to see what's around you, but I would not necessarily use that to, to navigate with. Um, Sparks guy says, hey, heading to Sanibel uh, Island uh, tomorrow. Have you ever uh, put a shot of Clorox in your freshwater tank for a quick... Hey, this cat is starting to eat everything in the van. It's really getting annoying. <laughs> um, heading south to Sanibel Island. So that's down by Fort Myers, Florida, right? Um, you're going to have a spectacular time. That is a really cool island. Um, I have never really actually 
Clorox My Fresh Water Tank for a quick cleanse. I should probably do that after three and a half years ownership since October 2018. Um, I'm filling and emptying my tank every few days. So I don't think there's really goopy in there. I'm pretty sure I drink the water from it. Um, I filter going into the tent, into the van. I filter coming out and I tap uh, in the sink. So it's pretty clean, but um, I probably should do that. So people are going to be completely grossed out, but, uh, you know, there's a big difference between um, filling and emptying your tank every four or five days versus sitting around for a couple, three, four weeks or months. Uh, man, if it's sit around like that, you definitely want to do that uh, um, for sure. Uh, let's see. So Steve saying he uses a backup Garmin. Um, yeah, primary is using the. Yeah. It's just so convenient, right? I mean, it's amazing how you how we used to get around, um, which kind of leads us to our uh, movie of the night. Um, so, uh, Mary Go wants to know uh, anyone else prefer smaller Atlas? Um, I'm sure they come in smaller sizes. Uh, this fits perfect in the pocket, uh, the ProMaster driver or passenger door. Um, and the reason again, I get it so I can see at a glance a bird's eye view of, of everything. So, um, cheers. But what I do have is I, I have two, um, United States, uh, maps in the van, one above my patio door, one back above my bedroom. So again, it just kind of reminds me perspective of all the places I still have to go, all the places I still need to experience. And, um, so she's saying, man, cause you're cool. Um, so Esther's got a question here. I'm planning to have my van wrapped half or full. Do you have any advice? Do you design it yourself? Where did you find uh, design inspiration? Great questions. Um, if I got a new van, I would wrap it in a minute. Um, it just it gives such a cool look and feel, and I never tire of looking at my van. It brings all kinds of proper attention. Um, I'm not sure I would do a half, depending on – if you want a full color change, you got to do – the full thing. I want a full color change. Um, some can do um, like a th the back third or maybe the front third of the van. Um, any advice? Um, find a good quality wrap outfit. Somebody that's been doing it a while, they got good Google ratings. Um, I did design it myself. Uh, I had the idea of wrapping the, the van in brown. I looked at colors. It was a toss up between this purple which I'm glad I didn't get, and this brown, which is beautiful. It just fits into every environment. Um, and then what the design artist and me worked with was just some conceptual designs of places I like going, um, and some of my favorites. And we had some pretty wacky stuff. We had a scorpion on the side, um, and it didn't really look right. So we kind of went with the, the Texas Southwest, uh, Texas Southwest, um, cause just places I hadn't really spent time in and I just dramatically, um, impacted my, my van experience. So, um, prepare to spend some money. Um, uh, mine was $5,000 two years ago, It'll be two years next month. And it's, it's held up beautifully. And again, I would do it again in a minute. He would probably charge me more because it was a ton of work. I didn't think he realized how much work he was doing and I blacked out everything. So, um, I think if you're going to do that. You're going to black out all the Chrome, uh, cause it's a matte finish. Um, but I'm super excited. Have to uh, keep us, uh, posted. Shirley's like, hey, do, let's do um, window clings for your van or magnets. Yeah, I, let's look at those too. A um, couple more questions and we got our movie of the week recommendation. So odds and ends. <laughs> What's to know? I have two cats and concerned about living in RV. Looking at uh, Nova 20C or RB, rear bath. I'm wondering, what do you think of having two cats and what's the biggest challenge would be? Do they like to travel? Um, would be one. And are they a little bit older? We were lucky with Luke. We had him, uh, our original cat, for a number of years. And he got in here and he was like just super chill and really um, took his leash and he loved people. Um, and he was he stood his ground with dogs. It was, he was a great cat. Uh, I would um, look at the Breeze litter box system, even for your residents, um, because it doesn't track litter. And um, it's way more odor-free. Um, I did a video on that. You'll want to check that out. So make sure that there is a place for your litter box. 
Um, I think with a, a breeze system, it can accommodate two cats. You can just scoop, you scoop it once a day anyway. And um, it's really a beautiful system. So in the rear bath, I think you would have storage. You could put the litter box in there. But the 20C, um, I'm not sure you could put a litter box in there because you'd be opening the door for them. And there's not really any hallway or garage storage. So um, make sure you have place for the cat box. That would be probably a big challenge. Your cats like to travel. Um, this cat I have currently, uh, he's young. He's a little less than a year old now. And um, he is up, he sleeps all day and he's up all night. And we're trying to figure out the best way to deal with that because um, he just runs around the van and uh, all the, the tables, the dash, and uh, runs around on me. So I've learned that I have to close out all the windows now, unfortunately, in the back bedroom, which I didn't used to do because he comes in and looks out the window. Um, and I can't have the fresh air coming in because any odors outside during the night just make him go berserk. He wants to turn into werewolf. So I think those are the kind of things just they're just we're learning feeling out each other. If you have again older cats, you probably wouldn't have that problem, I would guess. This guy's um I think will temper with age, but um he's, he's chewing things. Um, we've got tape on different things, but he's fortunately chewing his, uh, scratch box. Um, so I would give him something to take the energy away, the scratch box. Um, there's a double side tape for cats that I have, um, on my foam parts up in the, um, in the cab where the, where the two arms come up and you slide the, the window blind in the front and he's, he's chewed, chewing on the foam. Apparently it tastes good. I don't know. Um, so I've got this double-sided tape on it, and it's chilled him out. We're talking about you, Tuxedo. <laughs> He's like, what? Um, so that would be the thing I'm, I'm super cautious about, is him just chewing or clawing on stuff. Um, and so far, so good. He's just kind of a turkey at night when I'm trying to sleep. Good question. All right, let's do our movie of the night, and then we will look for more questions. And then okay, let's do this. So um, an audience friend a few weeks ago mentioned this, and um, I got to tell you, this is something that if you were into American history, let me zoom in here for you, this is something you've got to check out if you're not looking at it already, and that is uh, Benjamin Franklin by Ken Burns on PBS. Um, there's four episodes. Episode one and two have been released, and I'm telling you, this guy is a walking, talking American history lesson. What a stud. I mean, this guy was traveling to France to go get money from King Louis when he was like 60-some years old. I mean, I could barely get a bed in a van. And this cat's traveling by ship and sail and quill pen and candlelight. I mean, what is my, what do I got going on? But it's such an amazing, fascinating story uh, of Ben Franklin, how he was probably so instrumental at creating and knitting together the colonies and then help getting France's help to support us in the Revolutionary War. Just what a what a what an amazing person, and he's got his virtues he likes to work on, and um, apparently had a um, sense of humor. It's pretty popular with ladies. Had a terrible family life, but uh, if you haven't seen that and you're into American history, I, I uh, would implore you to take a look at it. And um, I watch it on my iPad, and it's just the most amazing stuff. Um, I can't wait for the next next um, the next episode to drop. Um, so that kind of goes into our, um, you know, our paper, you know, stuff. They were notes all the time, right? Letters back and forth. And that's why we know so much of this stuff about these people. So, um, yeah, so that's my um, recommendation for you this week. Um, all right, let's look for a last few minute, uh, last minute questions. Um... Uh, James, was, my tip is to have my wife empty the black tank. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. I don't see if seem too many ladies doing that. It's always the guys that are doing that. But she's making lunch, so that's good. I'm getting the wine ready. Um, uh, JC's got a question here. Hi, Scott. How good is the wood in your van? Thanks for your vids. I get to learn a lot from them. Um, you know, my cabinetry has held up super, super well. Nothing's come apart. Nothing, you know, hinges have uh, not come apart. There's nothing loose. It's as rock solid as the day I picked it up from the dealer first week in October 2018. Um, yeah, it's not hardwood like uh, a coachman, but it's it's been, it's, let me tell you, boys and girls, the cabinet above my, right there, above the galley, I must open that thing 10 times a day. And the door, bathroom door, it's not wood, but it's, you know, the folding door thing, 10 times a day. Um, laid my bed down. Twice a day. 
um, and it just has been rock solid. So um, I would not be worried about some folks that worry about you know staples and sticks. Um, these are not you know office staples. Uh, these are in construction materials. So, um, but I've 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 loved mine. It's just um, it's just been super great. Um, thanks for watching, man. I really appreciate it. Glad to get something out of it. Look for a couple more questions here. <laughs> so Lynn's saying, I'll take your word at, um, yeah, on the beer. She said, nothing about that looked yummy to me. Mm. It's got like coffee and vanilla. Although I don't like flavored coffee, but it's got a really strong coffee. It's just so delicious. Uh, Nancy's enjoying some uh, Sauvignon Blanc. So that's great. I would love it when you guys and gals join me for this. Um, I got this idea from two places. One is roaming around, experiencing all these cool things, tastes in particular. And um, Traveling Robert loves to sip his IPAs when he does lives. I'm like, why don't we kind of do the same thing? So, uh, yeah, I'm sure there's um, lots of laws. There's always lots of laws. Uh, Nancy Libation Lab made me wonder about laws or maybe driving a van with open containers of alcohol. They're all stored way back from the driver. I uh, think it's a motor home. I think um, police would be understanding. No, I've done some libation lives in parking lots and I kind of drove away. So that's probably not super cool, but I think in the context of what we're doing here, I'm uh, certainly a um, you know, campground, so I'm very cool here, but uh, I'm careful. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, Oh, no way. This is great. Good for you, Sparks guy. Yeah, it's cool. You'll love them. Um, they have a foosball. They had um, a cornhole with a bag, beanbag thing. Um, I'm excited for you. You're going to like it. It's it's really a cool crowd. I just, I should have checked their Wi-Fi. That I did not do. Um, most of them have smoke and hot Wi-Fi. All right. Last search for some questions. Uh, so roads of life any comments on apps made sp specific for rv safety togo rv parky allows you to um a lot of the rv specific ones that are paid certainly um i've never really had to worry about it so i haven't paid attention to it um but a lot of them do show heights if there's a, a filter for that um so you always want to check you know clearance above and below uh, your rig because it could be super serious. Um, and last question here, Mike wants to know, um, are you still in Florida? If so, how long I have left Florida. I've had enough of Florida palm trees and endless summer. I can't wait for cool weather. Um, and I'm rolling into spring and then summer. So I've got to work on this program. Um, but no, I'm, I'm out of Florida and, uh, that is what we do. Um, there. Okay. So with that, we're going to call it um, a wrap. Hey, if you got anything out of this tonight, appreciate that. Give this a uh, two thumbs up. This cat certainly is. Well, one thumb up at least. I um, want to thank each and every one of you. Happy Easter. It's Easter week. Uh, it's a big religious week for a lot of folks. Um, uh, I might even hit the cathedral here in Savannah. They're doing a special thing um, on Friday that I've done a few times. That's super um, moving to me. So, uh, but anyway, Easter bunnies and um, Easter eggs. Uh, just want to thank each and every one of you joining tonight and being out there driving me forward and, and um, 20,000 viewers and well over 3 million views now of uh, content we put out. So um, just want to thank you. Happy Easter. And until we see you next week on What's Up Wednesday, um, wish you to journey on and